morning, everybody. Good morning, Creative Mornings. Good morning. I understand that you all had to take a couple boats to get here. <laughs> the rain hasn't gone away. We all woke up saying rain, rain, go away, but it will not go away. I want to first start by thanking uh, Creative Mornings for allowing me to be speaker. Pretty cool. As well as the Museum of Art for hosting. I will tell you, I understand you all had some pretty good food upstairs. I understand you had some music. But the really important thing I want to know is who won Connect Four because I missed out. <laughs> you won? You won? Who else won? Listen, you got to put me on to a a life-size Connect Four. It's been a long time since I've played. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, what a cool way to have a Friday morning where I can be in a room with a bunch of creative folk. Now, I understand I got the memo yesterday about you all uh, being casual. But if I know it was gonna, knew it was going to be this casual, I would have asked for one of those green t-shirts. <laughs> I would have wore some green chucks to match it. <laughs> and so here's the deal. Let's see. What's your name, sir? Peyton. Peyton. Who's your hero? Hero. Yeah. My grandmother. Your grandmother. Outstanding. Who's your hero? There's no such thing as a wrong answer. Dr. Angela Davis. Dr. Angela Davis. I like that. All right. I'm going to pick on one other person. Who's your hero? Yes. My mother. Great. So I want to tell you all about a hero, a hero that is a, I would say, a hero to Birmingham probably a hero to this state, and a hero to a movement. And his name is the Reverend Frederick Lee Shuttlesworth. That just, that, that, that's not just the name of an airport. He was the pastor of Bethel Baptist Church. He was the co-founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, an organization that was highly instrumental in leading the American Civil Rights Movement. He was a confidant of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr an advocate for the homeless population. But you all should also know that he was beaten with brass knuckles. He had his home and his church bomb. He even witnessed the stabbing of his wife, y'all, and was nearly murdered on several occasions. He came face to face with the gruesome evils of racism, I would venture to say, every single day while here in Birmingham fighting for the movement. And here's what he pledged to do. He vowed to kill segregation or be killed by it. He was a survivor. In my mind, quite possibly the most and the greatest leader the state of Alabama has ever had. Make no mistake about it, y'all. The Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth is a hero. He's my hero. Reverend Shuttlesworth and so many fierceless freedom fighters before as well as after him brought symmetry to our world. And I want to tell you all what I mean by that. Symmetry is chiefly defined as the quality of being made up of exactly similar parts facing each other or around an axis. But let's break that down a bit into social terms. Relationships. Relationships can be symmetrical or asymmetrical. Symmetrical interactions send the moral message that all of us in this room, all of Creative Morning, we're all the same. Asymmetrical interactions may send the message that I am better than you or better than you all. And so before I go any further, let me put that into some context. I have many friends of different backgrounds, different races, ethnicities, creeds, and religions. I love my white neighbors but we're not necessarily the same in exact terms. Now, how do I know that? Well, look at us. You might see a little difference. We have different complexions. We have different cultural experiences. We even have different tastes of music and clothes and maybe even different values as well as religious beliefs. That's why the phrase I don't see color is very dangerous. Though the intentions may be good, that mindset ignores a couple things. One, the cultural aspects of us may be different. 
And so, no, I want to see your color. I want to embrace your color. But I will not prejudge you by your color or stereotype you by your color. And that's the difference, Creative Mornings, between symmetrical and asymmetrical interactions. In this case, saying we are all the same doesn't mean I ignore your culture, that I ignore your faith or your walk of life or pretend is exactly like mine. No, we're all the same means that I value you. It means that I value your self-worth and that you are due the same rights and privileges under the Constitution of the United States. Asymmetrical interactions, on the other end, are the opposite of this belief. And so if we think about Fred Shuttlesworth, and we put it in the context of symmetry, he fought for symmetry not only in the city of Birmingham, not only in the state of Alabama, but for our entire country. And before you leave out of this room, after we get done with our Q&A and our interaction, you all should know it's on each and every one of us to carry on this mission. Now, that's why I'm glad we're having this conversation during Black History Month. But February, the shortest one of the year, is not necessarily the ideal time to attempt to package all of black history, which is America history, into one month. Consider this. Harriet Tubman freed more than 300 slaves. Dr. George Washington Carver created more than 300 products from the peanut. And Montgomery native Percy Julian, one of the most brilliant scientists of our time, received more than 130 chemical patents for his creations. In 1963, 200,000 people gathered in Washington, D.C. to advocate for the civil and economic rights of African Americans. During that time, many of you all know that Dr. King stood in front of the Lincoln Memorial, and he spoke of a day right here in Alabama that black boys and black girls, black boys and black girls, would be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. If you think about that for a second, that is Dr. King dreaming of symmetry in its truest form. Now, do you really think, any of you all here in Creative Mornings, do you really think that you can package all of that history, all of those numbers, all of that hope into 28 tiny days? No. Our history is much bigger than that. And these days and times, critics, and I can tell you because I hear it, critics often challenge us. Is there still a need for Black History Month? Now my response is usually a smirk on my face. But here's the response. If you have to ask that, you clearly haven't been paying attention. Now let's just spit some numbers right quick. A poll from the Public Religion Research Institute found that 87%, 87% of black Americans say black people face rampant discrimination in the United States today. But only 49% of white Americans agree. A Pew Research poll found that 88%, 88% of blacks say the country needs to keep making changes for blacks to have equal rights while only 53% of white responders agree. And here's the deal, in the same poll, 43% of black respondents don't believe the US will be able to find racial harmony. Now, Creative Mornings, how many of you all think that what that number is for white Americans? Only 11% agree. And so based on that and so many other things, it is clear that we are living in divided times, both politically, and racially. And I truly believe we've forgotten some of the lessons of our past, which is why it's good to talk about a hometown hero like Rev Shuttlesworth. Now think about this. In our times right now, when you walk out of this room, you know it happens every single day. 
We use baseless stereotypes to judge the actions of others. Many of us would rather surround ourselves with like minds and attack those who think differently, who are brave enough to engage in meaningful, constructive conversation. Sometimes many of us bury our heads in the sands when tough issues arise, instead of coming to terms with our own shortcomings. And check this. We hide behind leaders who use patriotism. Patriotism as a tool to intimidate us instead of using the ideals of our Constitution to build bridges instead of walls. The lessons of black history taught us how to address these symptoms of what I would define as an ailing community. Now more than ever, I believe now more than ever, we need to heed those lessons. Now here's the important part. The path to symmetry has been paved by people like Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth. But more importantly, the path to symmetry has to be paved with your footsteps. That's even if you came here in rain boots. It's the quest for symmetry that spurred me to take action in my own hometown. I want you all to know that being the mayor 14 months, there is nothing about me that's special. The truth is I am just a kid from North Birmingham. I am the third of four children, raised in a home full of love. I quickly learned the meaning of love from my family, but that love taught me the importance of having love for my hometown. But it's also through that same love I also know pain. Five years before being in this position as mayor of our city, I lost my brother to gun violence. We later lost his nephew, his son, my nephew, to violence as well. Two young lives struck down before they were able to reach their full potential. Lives that were stolen from us. Lives that if I am honest with each and every one of you all, we mourn every single day. And I had to look my mother into her eyes who still grieves for that loss, for those losses. And as I grapple with gun violence in our city every day, I think about a parent should never have to endure the pain of losing a child. But it's a burden that is sometimes insurmountable for any of us in this community. But at the exact same time, you all should know what I've just shared with y'all hasn't slowed me down. If anything, it quickened my pace. In this hand, I couldn't sit back and talk about what the city wasn't doing for me or for any of us. I had to take a cue from my hero, Reverend Shuttlesworth. I had to be able to be the change I needed for our city. That quest for change spurred me to jump in a mayoral campaign where we took the streets, we hit the streets, we knocked on doors and actually engaged residents. The most important thing we did was listen. We heard the stories of frustration and tribulation. We heard the claims, we heard the dreams of communities looking for the same opportunities that were afforded with other affluent areas of our city. And I wanna tell you all what they told me. Creative Mornings, they told me they wanted change. They told me they wanted equality. They told me they wanted symmetry. Here's a challenge. And if you've been paying attention, I think it's been laid out before us. Right now in Birmingham, we need leadership that allows opportunity and, and a community. A community of Creative Mornings that's willing to embrace it. Two equal parts two equal parts to create a whole Birmingham symmetry. Birmingham needs bold leadership that allows new opportunities for women as well as minority-owned businessmen that can find their way in the marketplace. 
But at the exact same time, Birmingham's need bold, dedicated, dynamic businessmen and, and businesswomen who are ready to step outside of their comfort zones and take their creativity to the next level. Here's what we also need. We need a driven police force that cares about the community it serves. Because if they care about the community they serve, you can put neighbors above all else. But we also need dedicated community leaders in block watch programs to mentor our lost young before they turn to the streets, before they turn to gangs, before they turn to violence. But I would venture to say, based on what we've all seen over the last few months in our city, right now, here's what we need. Birmingham needs high level, high level leadership that is willing to have difficult conversations about race and culture in our city and not retreat like we've all seen recently to corners of like-minded constituents when issues in our city and in our community become uncomfortable. But Birmingham citizens must realize that their poisonous social media posts, and y'all know y'all have seen them, and accusatory language only widens the divide. It only widens the divide. Throwing gasoline on the fires of hatred won't solve our problems. If anything, it will consume us all. And so if you think about it, symmetry, symmetry cannot be achieved by one side of the equation. Each and every single one of us in this room and outside of this Museum of Art have a role to play. Just look at the lessons of our own history. If you've been listening, you would know that there would be no Dr. King without a Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth. And there would be no Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth without a Dr. King. Dr. King often spoke of the importance of compassion as well as forgiveness. And in these times, we should consider that. Because with those two gentlemen, even in the face of abhorrent evil, they forgave. Dr. King said, and I quote, we must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is also devoid of the power to love. There is some good in the worst of us, and there is some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. Consider what that means. Reverend Shuttlesworth lived those words. He endured the mob, he endured the Klansmen, who beat him and his wife, Ruby, when they attempted to enroll their child in the all-white school. That school is in walking distance of this building, Phillips. And a year earlier in this house, he was bombed, but only through the grace of God. He came from the rubble, literally unharmed. And when the police officer, who was also affiliated with the Klan, looked at him and said, hey man, I think you need to get out of here. His response, I wasn't raised to run. The Rev is right. He wasn't raised to run. He was raised to fight. Whereas Dr. King was more often measured in tone, Shuttlesworth's words were fiery. His personality was blunt, and he was often outspoken. You should know that even ruffled the feathers of some of his fellow activists. In my opinion, it was worth it in the name of justice. But like King, he lived by the SCLC motto. Not one hair on one head of one person should be harmed. Two sides of the same coin. And so if you look at these gentlemen, Dr. King and Reverend Shuttlesworth, they didn't always agree. They even clashed on theology. Let me veer left for you and, and break that down a little bit for you. They clashed and disagreed on Jesus' resurrection. 
King theorized that the disciples may have witnessed the apparition during the resurrection story. While Shuttlesworth countered that they did indeed. They did indeed encounter Jesus himself. And if that wasn't true, with the Kanye shoulder shrug, he simply said, if God lied about anything, then God was not God. They agree to disagree is what I'm telling you. They agree to disagree. And that is proof for all of us to know. That is proof that you don't always have to agree with every single word that your ally says. And you can still support them. Now, you want to talk about a powerful lesson in 2019. Creative Mornings, if we push away our allies every single time we have a difference of opinion, we could never move forward. And I can tell you that in today's time, without a doubt, with no hesitation, moving forward is what we must do. Because right here in these very streets, you either got here on a boat or walked into this auditorium. Our grandfathers and our grandmothers, our aunts and our uncles, our mentors and friends taught the world the meaning of equality. Right here in this city, they taught the world the meaning of justice. They taught the world about the weakness of hate and my favorite, the strength of solidarity. Right here, the unflappable citizens of Birmingham, right here, taught the world how to love. I am of the opinion we come from a proud, rich heritage. All of us should treasure, not just during Black History Month, but each and every single day that we stand right here on the Alabama red clay. That heritage was born from the awe-inspiring dreams of Dr. King and the impenetrable courage of Reverend Shuttlesworth, who in his own words in his book, which happens to be my favorite book, possess a passion for fire you can't put out. Equality, empathy, respect, sympathy. These are the characteristics that balance the scales of justice. And that's what we're talking about, balancing the scales of justice. Ones that tip out of the favor of blacks for hundreds of years. But the greatest gift, the greatest gift, the magic city. Our city, Birmingham, gave the world was symmetry. Our challenge, if you will join me, right now is to regain that balance. I want you all to know it's not just my job as mayor. It is not just the job of police officers or faith-based leaders or other elected officials. Right now, this is your city. This is your state. This is your country. This is your world. And whether you are a Dr. King or Reverend Shuttlesworth, all of us are fighting the same battle. Creative Mornings, I will leave you with my one fundamental belief. Once we achieve unity, we can achieve symmetry. Thank you.